Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today we will have uh, our updates for coal sector as well as the China uh, strategy updates. And later Paul will brief us the, uh, our Philip Weekly musings. So uh, I'll talk about our Singapore coal monthly updates. So what happened uh, in September was that China, the authority, relaxed the control of air pollution for the upcoming winter. So in September, the authority issued air pollution control plan for the Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei region and surrounding areas for the fall and winter spanning 2018 to 2019. So according to the updated plan, the Air control, the air pollution control target was the three percent reduction of uh, two point five PM two point five and a three production drop in the number of severely polluted days during uh, the period from October eighteen to March nineteen. So, uh, the the reduction target was uh mild compared with uh, last year's uh, above 20% reduction of uh, PM 2.5. So we think that um, the government are losing the, uh, losing the control, uh, losing the control of the air pollution uh, for the upcoming winter. So on the other hand, the NDRC held the six coastal provinces joint conference pertaining to coal import. And the government reiterated that the restriction on coal imports will be on par with last year. And there is no new quota being issued for the rest of this year. So for the Indonesia side, uh, the government lifted uh, 2018 domestic production target from 485 million tons to roughly 507 million tons. So the additional 22 million tons of coal will be all exported. That means the government uh, sees a strong demand from uh, overseas market. However, the uh, domestic production right now is still facing a hurdle, which is the ramp up of capacity uh, resulted from the additional, the lack of uh, additional mining equipments. So, uh, what is our view? Uh, we think that the China government uh, learned the lesson from last winter's uh, so-called coal to gas and coal to electricity conversion program. Because last year, uh, all of a sudden, the the authority uh, initiated. The, the abrupt um, air pollution, uh, pollutant control. So it brought uh, a big, it brought a big uh, inconvenience for the residents uh, in the region. So this year they slow down the pace of uh, reduction rather than um, repeated what they've done uh, last year. And meanwhile, uh, the authority will continue to assure the profitability of domestic coal producers. Later, I will explain this part because we see that the domestic coal production in China started to pick up in August. So as I mentioned before, the external uh, demand uh, is still strong. So uh, we expect that um, for Indonesia, the export uh, will see a new highs in 4Q this year. Uh, we also think that the bottleneck of capacity uh, resulting from the equipment supply is a short-term issue and it will take three to six months to uh, ramp up the capacity uh, internally. So all in all, we expect that the HBA, the domestic coal reference price will be average at around $100 per ton in 4Q. So uh, let's take a look at the snapshot of the coal markets. 
so here the first chart the first chart shows that the monthly co-production in prc uh started to pick up in august you see the growth in august uh turn positive and the indonesia co-export uh continue to be strong you see in july the growth of was around 20 percent and meanwhile the china the hydro and thermal power demand uh still grow healthily however because of uh the recent uh slack season the hba price started to correct uh in the recent two months but it's the, it is still above a hundred dollars per ton so for the uh five thousand five hundred cut fop spot price was still above the um was still above 600 uh rmb per ton and still within the abnormal the red zone here so that means the um, coal prices are still uh, healthy for the producers. So for the pot coal inventory level, uh, we still see uh, the growth was above uh, 40 percent in September. So that means um, the authority purposely to uh, build up the inventory so that um, can because they see a uh, there will be a strong demand for coal during the winter season so that means uh they wouldn't like um repeat the, repeat the same mistake they made last year and just to make sure that the um, domestic supply will be smooth and um continue so next i will pass on to mike to talk about china's strategy And I will talk about the channels last week. On macro side, for fiscal policy side, on October 8th, the channels increased the export tax the rebate rate, increased the 48 basis point of the comprehensive exp and export rebate rate to 14.19%, which will decrease the tax expense for companies about 47 billion RMB. Uh, this um, policy is the more focused on the high-tech and the cultural industries. For the monetary policies on October 7th, the central bank cut uh, uh, re uh, received the rate 1% effected from today's. And uh, there is uh, no open market operations the last week. Um, there is uh, two um, points in, you, uh, you, the investor should pay attention to by the speech um, by government of the central bank. First thing is the um, uh, China economic uh, growth is uh, relatively stable and expect to achieve the 6.5 percent target, even higher. Secondly, the cur um, current interest rate is uh, appropriate, and there is still room for the monetary policy tools, like the interest rate and the uh, uh, reserve rate. So, um, um, based um, based on the policy, we can see the um, the China policy is still focused on the cost reductions and uh, to boost the consume uh, consumptions. Um, so we bullish on the industries like uh, in infrastructures and uh, and customer consu and consumer. Um, for the stock uh, for the stocks so we covered in um, the, uh, the Hong, on Hong Kong research teams to recover cover is uh, Kingsoft, uh, Meng News, and uh, Huawei Auto. Uh, Huayu Auto. Uh, for this week, we are look, uh, looking forward to the Chinese uh, September's the CPI numbers and the GDP numbers. Um, we will move to the poll for uh, week amusing. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, hi, uh, th this is uh, this is Paul here, just to give you a, a, our usual weekly update. 
Okay, in terms of the some of the the mac, the, the key um, mac, macro events last week, uh, I think uh, interest the rise in interest rates is a headline, uh, especially the US the ten year US Treasuries. Uh, but uh, last week, I think it did back down to the three point one six from three point two two plus. Um, okay, in terms of the US ten year US Treasuries, it's it's not an alarming headwind to the equity markets yet, uh, or even to the economy. Uh, I think we'll show you some charts later. Um, market expectations is about 3.25 for the 10-year treasuries by year end. Uh, how the market looks at this is basically for one simple way is like every 50, every 50 basis points uh, moved by the Fed, uh, they tend to discount it by half. Uh, I mean, uh, there's no science to it, but that's, that's some of the, the ballpark numbers that people are using. Uh, in terms of the other thing that's worrying on the interest rate front is of course in the Italian yields, the, they are at a four and a half year high. Uh, the, the, of course, the, there's, there are issues brewing there and, and the, the spread between the German and the Italian yields are uh, about 300 basis points. And during the worst period uh, in 2012, when we had the Euro, Europe, European crisis, it was as large as 500 basis points. So, so that's something to monitor. Of course, the other key thing was the, 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 the US and China tensions has escalated to inter uh, uh, of course, into politics now, uh, there's a new so-called new Cold War uh, happening. Uh, I think it, the first salvo, of course, was came from um, uh, Vice President Pence. I think his speech was was pretty aggressive. I think he's complained about the Chinese economy, about their interference, and and also that the Chinese are militarizing the South China Sea. But anyway, that's that's a, a an issue that uh, I worry that the market has. Uh, going back to Singapore. Uh, of course, we had our uh, GDP numbers in on Friday. It wasn't a good number. It was up 2.6, slightly below, uh, uh, slightly above expectation 2.4. But uh, it's actually the slowest GDP that read that we have in six quarters. Uh, separate, separate from this, uh, when we look at the sector data, just just independent of the GDP numbers, uh, construction is actually doing really well. Uh, it's up 45 percent year to date. Uh, in terms of another data point that we got was uh, private hospital admissions. Uh, that is uh, becoming very weak. Uh, uh, 2018 is probably, the, in terms of uh, hospital admissions to, to private hospitals, it's probably going to be the worst in nine years. So hospital is uh, seeing some very big uh, numbers. Uh, the other uh, piece of news that came out is, of course, uh, MES uh, on Friday. They, raised their, uh, they announced their usual models and gradual appreciation, but they're increasing the slope. How everyone reads it is that um, against their trade-weighted basket, they're moving the slope by 50 basis points. So the first 50 basis point move was in April and this is the second. So you're talking about one percentage point uh, move on the Singapore dollar against the trade beta basket. Uh, the other comment for MEFs was of course that they mentioned that they are still still watching the property market and they claim that it's out of sync with the weak economy and rising interest rates. Okay, uh, in terms of our tactical call, uh, later we'll show you some charts. But anyway, uh, we, we think that it's time to, to start slowly accumulating. I think the, what we see is that the market is cheap on multiple fronts. Uh, when we look at uh, PE, price to book, dividend yield, and even the yield spread, uh, the market it looks cheap on, on all kinds of valuations. Uh, okay, uh, we'll show you the charts later. But uh, anyway, in terms of the things to monitor, of course, there's this US Treasury currency manipulation report. Uh, I don't think, uh, so far, the news flow is that they're not going to, to, to announce China as a currency manipulator, but if it, they really does that, if they really do that, then it's going to be really, really negative for the for the whole market. Okay, uh, um, and of course, at the end of the week, they will have some Chinese uh, data, which everyone is watching how severe is the slowdown coming out of China. Okay, uh, the following few weeks will be the, the bank the bank results. Uh, there hasn't really been any major corporate news to, to, to mention uh, from last week. Okay, in terms of uh, how we see it, in terms of the valuations, as you can see, in terms of uh, price to book, uh, we, we seldom see, uh, use these charts because they seldom go down to such extreme lows. But as you can see, uh, uh, excluding the 2016, early 2016 scare where we had some worries over China, uh, uh, especially on their foreign exchange, uh, uh, excluding this distress level, actually the markets are actually at, uh, at, uh, at very good valuations right now. It's actually below the one cent deviation in terms of uh, the price to book. Uh, probably the second lowest now uh, post GFC. Uh, in terms of the PE, also likewise, also shows a very low, uh, similarly very ex uh, coming to extreme lows in terms of valuations. Again, uh, coming below the one standard deviation. Uh, again, uh, also um, the the second lowest uh, since uh, post GFC. Then when we look at the dividend yields of the of of the the market of the SDI, is actually post GFC. We could say it's actually the highest post GFC. 
as you can see, it's actually even the, the dividend yields round now for the STI is even higher than during the the the, the early 2016 worry over China. And of course, at the time, we also had all the worries over the banks. Uh, and when we look at how the dividend yields compared with our, uh, not, not to look at the dividend yields alone, but to look at the dividend yields compared to uh, as interest rates are moving, how the spread is, uh, even that also suggests that the valuations are also uh, turning cheaper. But again, not as, as cheap as the previous two periods, but uh, because the as the 10-year government bonds has, has also moved up. So anyway, in conclusion, based on valuations, all four, four fronts so that the, show that the, the markets are ex, uh, becoming uh, very, uh, at almost extreme cheap level, uh, valuations. Uh, this is our usual um, so-called model portfolio. Okay, um, move on. Uh, we've got questions about how, how high the interest rates will rise before it really hurts the economy. Okay, anyway, this is just a, a, a comparison of the, 10 -year, the US 10-year treasury. Yields. The shaded area is, is basically when you recession. So in the last few recessions, the uh, in terms of just the U.S. Treasury yields alone, uh, you, you can't really make any any useful uh, conclusions from this because interest rates have been on the downtrend for the past thirty five years. So the last time we had a recession, interest rates was nine percent two years before the recession here. So it's like twenty four months before zero. Then two years before it was five point five percentage plus. Then two years before it was four percentage plus. So uh, right now, if you assume 2020 is the end of 2020 is, is recessionary period, we're still very far off in terms of uh, interest rates starting to, to hurt the, 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 at least the US economy. Uh, then if you move on to the next chart, if you're looking at the US Treasury yields, not just stand alone because it's, it's been on the downtrend for 30 years. So a more meaningful measure probably we have to adjust it for the real interest rates. So in terms of the real interest rates two years before recession, so in the let's say you want to read this like 1992 two years before the recession the real rate was about five five percent five percent, so right now we are way way off we are, we are hardly reaching one, uh, and the, the last few recessions maybe twelve months before the, the we had a recession interest rates or even twelve or, or fifteen months before the recession you could say the interest rates real interest rates was about maybe three point five to four percent. So if you just simplistically add in a 2% inflation right now for the US, you're talking about maybe uh, maybe a 5.5% five, five kind of uh, in, uh, treasury use or interest rates before we could see something that actually becomes a headwind for the economy and, and, and back, backs down the US economy into a recessionary period. Uh, this is just some, some uh, of the historical numbers that we can look at. So uh, interest rates is not a big issue right at the moment right now. Okay, uh, I think that, 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 that comes to the end of our, uh, our uh, conference call. Not, not many corporate news uh, for this week, but if you have questions, uh, please uh, post them. Thank you.
Oh, I follow three Hong Kong stock recommendations. The um, list three uh, stock is uh, recommended by the Hong Kong research teams. Um, you can read the research papers if you uh, if you want to. And uh, and for these three stocks, because the we see the uh, the the latest policies that focused on the customer consumers and uh, customer consumers, so we re recommend these three uh, stocks. Thank you. Okay, um, we have another question. How do U.S. Treasury yields affect economic performance? What is the mechanics, please? Uh, I, I think this is just, uh, just bas basic uh, higher interest rate levels that will, uh, that will, that will just uh, um, cause corporates to pay higher interest expense or even consumers to, to, to pay um, higher interest. Uh, I mean, it's just a bas basically uh, corporates and consumers will just have to pay high interest uh, expenses and you will put a drag on, on not only consumption, but also uh, investments as, as uh, the, the, every project, I mean, you want to go the into theory into this, uh, every project will be valued on, uh, on higher interest rate levels and you could actually curtail uh, capital expenditure and curtail consumption spending. Um, not, nothing unique about this, it's just some, this is just some uh, basic, uh, uh, just bas basic uh, economic relations, uh, uh, economic uh, uh, relationship. It's just a general, a uh, view of uh, higher interest rates pulling down the whole uh, e economy in terms of consumption and, ex and capital expenditure. Yeah, uh, the next question we had was uh, in terms of the te technical analysis uh, and, and analysis of uh, STI. Uh, we asked, uh, regretfully, our, uh, our chartist has left, so uh, we, will, we will have to get back to you on that. Hold on, we got one more question. Okay. Um. Uh, sorry. Uh. Just another question. Uh. What's the the P, the the forward PE of the STI? Uh. As you can see from from the from the table here, it's probably about twelve 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 and a half times PE right now. Yeah. Thanks. Um. Mike, we'll get back to you on the Hong Kong.
um, for the Hong Kong market to the PE, the, 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 the Hang Seng index, the PE P is about 9.6, it's uh, relatively low. Uh, there's a question on comment on valuation for sets. So at the uh, current price, uh, sets is about 20 times PE. Okay, since there are no more questions, uh, we'll end the webinar here. Uh, thank you for attending and see you again next week.